What's up everyone and welcome to part 6 in the video series about how to get good at using Procreate. In this video we're going to be covering adjustments or otherwise known as image effects. All right, so adjustments. Now tap with four fingers to reveal the interface. And now we're gonna click on this icon right here. And we see adjustments. And now the first one here is the opacity of this layer. So if we tap on opacity, we can control the opacity of the layer. Now there's another way to do that. And that's by tapping on the N icon over here and then controlling the opacity like that or tapping with two fingers on the layer and controlling the opacity like that. Now the next one is Gaussian Blur. Now Gaussian Blur is basically a visual effect that creates a smooth blur resembling that of viewing this image through a translucent screen. Now there are a couple of ways that you can use Gaussian Blur to create cool looking effects. You can duplicate this layer, select the underlying layer and then use the underlying layer as a glow effect or as a drop shadow. Let me show you how I do this. So I select the underlying layer, then I click on Gaussian Blur, and then I simply raise the Gaussian Blur. And now you can see it has this kind of a glowing effect in the background of the layer. So it kind of makes it pop just a little bit more. Now you can go ahead and you can increase the brightness of the underlying layer. And that just makes it more pronounced, the glow effect. Or you can decrease the brightness, which makes it a drop shadow. Now the next one is Motion Blur. Now Motion Blur is distinctly different from Gaussian Blur because it has a linearity to it. So basically you can create a motion effect from this point and we're doing it on the background layer right here. You see we have it on the background layer. And basically what we're doing is we're creating a motion-like effect, like this object is moving through space and we're creating this cool looking motion effect. And if you want to change the direction of the motion, what you do is you simply slide your finger up and down or in circles around the point which you started tapping from. So you tap in the middle, then you move your finger while holding down and that creates this motion effect. And if we do it on the top layer, we can see now the top layer looks like it's moving relative to the background layer. Pretty cool. Now the next one up is the perspective blur and perspective blur is basically a blur like effect that emanates from a particular point on the canvas. So it's going to radiate away from this point, which we can move around just freely like this. And if we slide our fingers across the canvas like this, we increase the blur effect. And now we can see it has these blur lines, which are uh, basically emanating from this particular point. And we can move it after the fact and change if we want to make some adjustments like position it like here or here. And you can see what effect this has on the image if we move this point around like this. You can see it just kind of blurs it based on this focal point. And if we move our fingers on the canvas like this, we can decrease the intensity of this effect. Now looking down over here, we see this word position. Now this is the active mode of the perspective blur. If we switch it to direction, now we've changed it to a directional blur. And this is going to create a cone-like effect emanating from this point. It's going to basically blur everything in a cone based on where you position this and where the arrow is pointing. So this can be kind of a useful effect if you're making a fireball or something like that. Something that requires motion going in a particular direction. Then you can apply the directional perspective blur to that and achieve this effect. All right, so next one up is the sharpening effect. Now, the sharpening effect basically does exactly what the name suggests. It sharpens the image or the edges of the image. So if we zoom into it and look at the details here and increase the effect, we can see the details really pop out much better. And this is pretty good for this kind of image, but if you have a low quality image, if it's very pixelated or something like that, this effect can be absolutely horrendous. It can look very, very bad. So if you have a very low quality image, be aware of that and don't use this effect on it. The next one up is noise. And 
That basically adds pseudo randomly generated noise to the image, which can be kind of useful if you're making gradients, for example, because Procreate doesn't handle gradients that well. It creates these weird looking bands uh, over the image. So add some noise and it can help to reduce that effect. All right, so now we're getting to the good stuff. Hue, saturation and brightness. Now, let's check that out. So this is basically where you control the hue, saturation and brightness. The hue meaning the color, specific color of the image. So if we slide that around, we can change how this layer basically looks, the colors of the layer. The saturation determines how much color is going to be displayed. And we can have it desaturated, almost no color, just black and white, or we can go the opposite direction and have it very saturated or somewhere in the middle. And then you can change the hue just to make the hue to saturation ratio just right. And the brightness increases or decreases the brightness of the layer, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So we can preview it without the effect. We can undo everything, redo it, of course, and reset it to what it was when we started. The next one up is color balance. Now, color balance is a little bit different than hue, saturation, brightness. Hue, saturation, and brightness kind of works over the entire range, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. They're all combined into one. But the color balance separates these into highlights, midtones, and shadows. So you can make changes to the shadows, you can make changes to the midtones or the highlights separately. So you can maybe give the shadows a little bit more yellow or more blue. Then we can go to the midtones, give them a slight bit of a green or magenta. And you can continue like this, changing the highlights, the midtones or the shadows separately in order to adjust the color balance so that the image looks just right. So that is what's great about having access to the highlights and the midtones and the shadows. You can control the brightest parts of the image, the midtones and the darkest parts of the image or the shadows. So now we're getting into the really good stuff, the curves. Now, many people are kind of hesitant of using curves because it looks kind of complicated, this graph over here with all of these options, but don't worry, it's not really that complicated. So let's take a look at what this does here. We have composite. Now, composite basically is a combination of red, green, and blue. It's all of those combined. And once you make changes on the graph, you're changing red, green, and blue at the same time. And now let's take a look at the graph itself. Now, to simplify things, I'm gonna split the graph into three parts. We have the highlights, the midtones and the shadows, just like we talked about in the color balance. So let's say that I wanted to increase the reds in the shadows. So what I do is I drag this one up. First, I make a point here and then I can drag this one up and we can see we have reds in the shadows right now. So let's say I wanted to increase the greens in the midtones. What I would do then is I would add a point here, point here and here, and I would drag the middle point up and now I've increased the greens in the midtones. And now we can reset the changes to go back to the way it was before. And you can really fine tune the curves and add as many points as you need on the graph in order to get the results that you're looking for. And that's what's great about curves because it gives you so much control. It's basically a combination of hue, saturation, and brightness and the color balance. And you can really go, <laughs> go crazy and and make some really weird combinations of colors and, and intensities. But let's talk a little bit more about how the graph itself works. Now, in order to understand how the graph works, we have to learn about what opposite colors are. Now, we see red, green, and blue. Now, what is the opposite of red? Now, if we go to the color balance and we look at red over here, we see cyan is the opposite of red. For green, it's magenta. For blue, it's yellow. So if we go back to the curves and we take a look at the red over here and we increase the red, of course we get red. But if we decrease it all the way down, we get cyan because cyan is the opposite of red. Now if we go to the green and we increase it, we get green, opposite, magenta. Green, magenta. Same is true for blue. If we increase it, we get blue. If we decrease it, we get yellow, which is the opposite of blue. So that's how the curves graph works. You have the opposite colors 
balancing out each other. But the good thing about curves is you have this greater control over the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows to a much greater degree than you could with just the color balance or the hue saturation or brightness. So last but not least is recolor. Now recolor basically takes the active color that you have selected. So let's take maybe red, for example, and let's tap on recolor. And now we can see there's a little dot over there, which we can move around. And that basically specifies the point where the recoloring is gonna occur. We can increase the threshold by moving the slider over there and move the point afterwards, anywhere. So basically it's gonna select the color range underneath the cursor and it's gonna recolor based on the color that you have selected. Now there's another way to do the exact same thing and that's by dragging and dropping the color like this to a point and hold it there until the effect takes place and then slide the Apple Pencil to the left or right to decrease or increase the threshold. Now that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. Leave a thumbs up on this video if it helped you out. It really helps me out. Click on here if you wanna check out the next video in this series where I'm gonna be talking about the transform tool. Click on here to see another video from mine and click here to subscribe to the channel. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.